Not since the days of Samantha Stevens in Bewitched have witches been so fashionable in Hollywood. There's Sabrina the Teenage Witch, there's Practical Magic, the movie starring Nicole Kidman and Sandra Bullock, and Charmed, the new TV show with Shannon Doherty. Well, witches aren't just for Hollywood. The women you're about to meet claim they are modern-day witches who enjoy casting spells in their spare time. These women have a lot in common. The documents now. They're all professionals. How's she been? Good, good, good. They all live in New York City. And they're all witches. People think of the hideous hag with the green face and the water on her nose, flying around on a broom and staring up evil potions and all those silly things that come from Hollywood and other horrible places, which have absolutely nothing to do with what a witch is really all about. Phyllis Curat is a high-powered attorney, author, and witch. Followers of her craft have gotten a bad rap for centuries for all the wrong reasons. Anybody engaged in uh, malevolent practices or um, Satanism, which gets confused with witchcraft, has absolutely nothing to do with us. Those things are an inversion of Christianity. What we are doing is uh, Wicca, which pre-exists Christianity by thousands of years. These people who were practicing what we now call witchcraft actually were practicing shamanism and household healing. But when the power structure of the Christian church was introduced, then you had to discredit the local uh, practitioners of magic, of religion. The word witch comes from the Old English witcha, which means wise woman. These women belong to the Wiccan religion. Today, 40,000 women call themselves witches or Wiccans and are as far from black cats and pointy hats as you can get. Really what this movement is about is about healing, about affirming the feminine, and about celebrating the ability to give life. Traditional Western religions envision their god as male. Goddess worshipers don't. They see the divine as feminine. Like God, there is no one goddess to worship. She is nameless, faceless, universal. When you're worshiping goddess, it's very, very more general. It's more calling on that feminine in yourself and celebrating it in ritual. And these things are really important in a society that emphasizes public power, emphasizes the factory, emphasizes the office, and allows us to forget that we are, in fact, still humans. Mary Womack teaches cultural anthropology at UCLA. She expects to see the Wiccan movement continue to grow. More women are becoming witches now because they're not finding their spiritual and emotional needs met in a male hierarchy. They are trying to find something that is essentially feminine that they define for themselves, something that's not defined by men. I was really drawn to Wicca many years ago in high school, really, and was drawn because of the nature of, of the feminine nature of the religion, the, the, the focus on the, the feminine nature of the goddess. I first became interested in Wicca when I was 15, and I think uh, for me at that time, I was more interested in the mystery and the power, and e it evolved for me, um, and the spirit became more important for me later on. Witches in training begin by joining a coven. Full initiation takes a year and a day. To reach high priestess status requires four years of study. We all come from the goddess, and to her we shall return like a drop of rain. The coven consists of no more than 13 who attend weekly meetings where they perform ritual ceremonies or circles. It is um, a forging of a ring of energy. It is the creation of a cauldron, essentially, a container in which we raise energy and transform and transmute energy and direct it and transform and transmute ourselves. As high priestess, Phyllis starts the circle. Circles can have many themes, but tonight's is truth and peace. White gowns and candles correlate with this theme. The first thing that you're going to see will be the casting of the circle, which we do hand to hand, which is the consecration of the space. Hand to hand, I cast this circle. The hand, I cast this circle. Hand to hand, I cast this 
We will uh, invoke the four directions, very similar to what Native Americans do. It's an acknowledgement of the earth. It's, a, it's the way that we begin to commune with the sacred nature of the earth itself, with the air, fire, the sun, the water, the earth. The ancient old ones of the east. The and then there'll be a statement of purpose and an invocation of the goddess. And then um, our magic, which will probably be some singing to raise energy. This is the spell of living well. This is the spell of summoning the Divine Mother into the A world. A circle lasts about an hour. It involves chanting, dancing, and invoking the goddess within. And yes, witches do cast spells. Yeah. <laughs> I look upon a spell as though I was taking out insurance just to make sure that I did get what I need. We can use it for very practical purposes. Should I take that job in California? Should I go back to school? Should, is it now the right time to ask for a raise? Hail and farewell. The circle is open, but, but never, never broken. broken. Merry meet, and merry part, and merry meet again. <laughs> when the circle is finally over, everyone is euphoric. It's like a a cauldron of energy that comes up and I feel great now. I feel really great, yes. What I get out of the craft is working with a wonderful group of women and a feeling of family and community. One of the most important gifts I think that we give each other is that we see the goddess in each other and it enables us to see it in ourselves. It would be a much healthier and happier world if everybody learned how to do this. Flowing to the ocean to find out even more about witches, you can check out Phyllis Curat's Book of Shadows or look for a Wiccan group online. We'll see you after this.